Uh, it's leading on Zelensky's statement rejecting Ukraine joining NATO. He says the peace talks with Russia are getting more, in inverted commas, realistic. We'll be talking about that very shortly. The Mirror condemns Boris Johnson for his overtures to the Saudis, calling the talks deals with another devil. The Guardian leads on Ukraine's concessions as Russian airstrikes batter the capital, Kyiv, as well as the hopes of freedom for the British-Iranian dual national Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe after six years of an imprisonment. I should say uh, we will be speaking to her MP a little bit later on in the programme. Uh, here's the Daily Mail describing the court ordeal of the Russian journalist who protested uh, over what they're terming Putin's war live on TV. The eye claims that the Kremlin's going to change their invasion tactics in the face of fierce Ukrainian resistance. The Express describes the war as hell on earth as the civilian death toll soars. And the Star describes the thrilling escape from Ukraine of a Zelensky impersonator who was helped, believe it or not, by a Putin and a Kim Jong-un impersonator. Well, of course... During the Second World War, there were multiple Hitlers, there were multiple Churchills, yeah. there were multiple um, Montgomerys. Yeah. Um, so that was... Yeah, there are lots of theories. Can, but you yeah. wouldn't really want that job. You wouldn't want that you? job, no. Yeah. People it's go all very well being a lookalike Kate mm. and going to the races or something. But it's quite different <laughs> being funny. a lookalike Putin. That, that'll happen to you today at the races. Oh, you know? I doubt. I doubt. Say, there's the Duchess of Cambridge <laughs> there wish. coming through. <laughs> Um, Liz Kershaw is here to talk about the papers and Fraser Myers, uh, the deputy editor at Spiked, uh, is here as well. Very good to see you both. And overtures from President Zelensky regarding the NATO membership. He's saying, look, it doesn't have to be. Yes, yeah, so I'm just a decoy. The real Liz Kershaw's still in bed. <laughs> um, well, it has been seen as a glimmer of hope for conciliation and arbitration. Um, President Zelensky is now saying we've, we have to, to his people, we have to get real guys. We're not going to be joining NATO. And that's seen as handing perhaps an olive branch to the Russians. You know, we'll, we'll edge in further together, perhaps to reach an agreement. Um, and it's you know, quite, been quite offbeat about a ceasefire deal. And um, it said maybe no later than May, early May, we could have a peace agreement we're at the fork in the road. There will either be a peace deal struck very quickly within a week or two with troop withdrawal or there'll be an, an attempt to scrape together, some say, Syrians round two, where, um, mid-April, late April. So it's a gl everybody's clutching at straws, mm -hmm. aren't they, for a, mm -hmm. a glimmer of hope. That the trouble is, is that's assuming Putin's rational, isn't it? And that's assuming that he will take an olive branch. It's just it's so impossible to know what he's thinking, what he wants, really. Well, he stated that one of his reasons for invasion was that Ukraine was joining NATO. So if that's taken away, what will his response be? Mm. Yeah. Will it be logical? Mm. Fingers crossed. Yeah, and there's no question that kind of um, NATO expansion has played a big role in this crisis. Obviously, it's not an excuse for <laughs> invading Ukraine, of course, but it has stirred up tensions in, in the region. So anything that can reduce those tensions might be a good thing. Ultimately, it's got to be up to the Ukrainians to decide, um, you know, whether they want mm -hmm. to join NATO, whether they want to join the EU and, you know, we should back them in whatever decision they make. But it's also clear that this is, yeah, Ukraine joining NATO is, is completely intolerable to, to Russia. And it's still in the balance whether Estonia, Latvia, Finland will join NATO because mm. that's mooted and Finland was talking about that this week. So they're on the border with Russia. Yeah. Would that provoke him as well? Yep. Yeah, that's well, if the, the aim way, of this yeah. was to push back NATO expansion, it's probably failed it's because it's, yeah. it's mm. you know encouraged these states to want to join. Fraser, let's talk about this, the, the Kyiv siege. It's under a, a curfew at the moment, a 35-hour mm. curfew, I think, but it really does seem as though the attacks on the city have really started ramping up. Yeah, so uh, last night we had one of the first uh, inner-city um, air missile attacks on, on Kyiv. So, um, you know, things are really starting to get hairy the, on, on the other side, however, we've seen this is a city in, in defiance. You know, we've seen the bravery of people standing up um, for their country uh, against um, Putin's invasion. And that really is something stirring, something to uh, celebrate. You know, we've all been incredibly um, overwhelmed by how brilliantly people have defied this invasion in Ukraine, how ordinary people have, you know, 
stepped up to the task of defending their homeland. Yeah, I was thinking about the words um, Zelensky's wife was saying that I, I won't be crying tears when the Russians invade, you know, my city. She said, my children will be looking at me. I'll be standing beside my husband. And that kind of bravery is so inspirational. Um, but, but the thing about this, Fraser, is that you just can't sort of do this and then go about your ordinary work. Or, OK, the war's over. Let's all carry on and, and rebuild. I was at a football match on Sunday and a number of uh, flares were let off, massive bangs. And because of my upbringing, I know what a bomb sounds like mm. and, and you know what uh, shots sound like and whatever. And it was massive. You have a reaction with it. It stays with you. It does not go mm. away. What these people have witnessed, what they've gone through, nobody should have had yeah. to No, have to go Absolute, through. absolutely. And, you know, even if we have a a peaceful resolution to um, to the current conflict. I mean, the tensions are going to be there for a very long time. The, um, you know, the feeling that the Ukrainians have just been so hard done by is, I mean, it's, it's an outrageous what has happened to them. Well, the damage, I mean, those satellite away. images yeah. yesterday mm -hmm. where you could see the extent of the damage to the country. I mean, we were all naturally and rightly horrified by Grenfell Tower, but there were like half a dozen of those a blaze. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yesterday, you know, that puts it in perspective. It yeah, yeah, the flames leaping out, and you're thinking, and some woman had managed to dive to the floor below and crawl through a neighbour's flat, and then find a stairwell at the end. To, imagine lying in your bed, and that. No. I mean, I, it, I get twitchy. Yes, it's ridiculous. But I was sitting in the garden, the birds were tweeting, the sun was shining, and I thought that more than one helicopter. Mm -hmm. thundered over, you know, yeah, in a yeah, space of a yeah. couple of hours, and I was like, what's going on? You know, yeah. it, it does yeah. make you yeah, feel... Yeah, it really it, does. It, Grateful it, for, for what we've got. It's all going on. Um, OK, Putin, <sighs> there was a plan A, there was a plan B. Where are we at now? Right, well, three million people have now fled, and um, this is what's been described as third-phase violence, designed to bludgeon Ukraine into submission with disproportionate violence. I mean, what kind of species yeah. are we? All animals fight over territory and fight for mates and fight for food. But this, anyway, it's said that he might now be relying on mercenaries who are more likely to commit atrocities. And because Ukraine, I was, looking, I was thinking, how big is Ukraine? How far away is Kiev? So I Googled it yesterday mm. and it's... Um, 1,500 miles, 1,700 miles from Dover to Kiev, just thinking of people trying to make the escape. It's 700 miles across the Ukraine. It's not the size of France, I was told. Well, from, from Dover to Marseille is 800 miles. Right, OK. And from Dover to Warsaw is about that, but then Kiev's beyond that. But anyway, so what, what this is saying is that his ground plan has failed, you know, sort of conventional warfare with tanks and snipers and, and bullets. And what he's going to do now is try and completely obliterate Ukraine's supply lines using more surface-to-air missiles yeah. and just obliterate the place. Um, it, the only place he might actually try and advance on with his tanks and his ground troops is the port of Odessa, which is strategically significant. But basically, he's going to do what they did to Aleppo and Syria and must we saw it just completely destroy. We, we, we talk about uh, Crimea and uh, all, all, you know, Boris Johnson yesterday saying we, sh we, we had an opportunity missed there, we should yeah. have done something there. But Aleppo, Aleppo, again, then, barrel and, bombs, yeah. chemical, chemical weapons. weapons. Yeah, the children yeah. frothing at the mouth. It, it was Do you remember those if, images? Yeah, it's as if that was a dress rehearsal mm -hmm. for what we're seeing now. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's pretty extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, the, the barbarism is just, you know, going times a thousand at this point. It's worth remembering as well. Um, I mean, this is obviously a sign of failure, um, a failure to um, complete the mission as, as intended. Back at, back at the beginning of this war, US intelligence was saying that Kiev would be taken within 48 hours. Now, we're, you know, this war is running into, into weeks, and that's in part down to the incredible uh, resistance of the Ukrainians. But I think also Putin believed his own hype. He believed that... You know, he believed his own propaganda, essentially. He believed that he could waltz into uh, Ukraine, into Kiev, and people would feel liberated. I mean, it's just crazy to think about that. Mm. Here's another consequence of this. This is front page of The Sun. Um, Chelsea with a big dollar sign in all of this. Mm. The man who was appointed by Donald Trump as the uh, US ambassador yeah. to the UK... Um, 
is, is, is apparently uh, thinking up a, a bid for Chelsea Football Club. See, yeah, he like... owns the New York Jets. Right. It's a massive sports team. And, this is Woody Johnson. Uh, yeah, it's Woody Johnson and the clues in the name because, you know, baby love, pink baby love in a pink bottle, etc. His family is Johnson and Johnson. Oh, he is he, worth billions, and his wife is Ukrainian, which could mm. be an influence on him. You know, sort of revenge. Is it? Uh, and she's also an ex Wall Street stock specialist who made her first million. At 26, and she was a go go girl in Star Trek <laughs> Deep Space Nine, best friends with Melania Trump. I mean, the, the clickbait on this is Trump. Actually, Trump's not got anything to do with it because Trump has actually, I've got more money than him. He had to, he, you know, he had to um, crowdfund for a new plane this week, didn't he? So it's nothing to do with Trump. No, it's Woody Johnson, who's a very affable guy. He was the ambassador to the court of St. James from the United States during Brexit and, and I saw him on, you know, quite a few times commenting. It was very reasonable. But I didn't realise how minted he is. But <laughs> it says he can undermine the Saudi bid and it's uh, is not likely to be paying the three million three billion that Abramovich wants. He's, he's bidding less than the Saudis, two million rather than two and a half. But he says that because of all his commercial contacts in the United States, he can put yeah. Chelsea on the American map and bring in a lot of dollars. Yeah. To and them. he's a top diplomat, or was a top diplomat, yeah. so respectable. After well, all. I, think in the, I think in the States you can get, you can get a, a really cushy um, ambassadorial job, can't you, just by having big books and knowing the right people and being glamorous. So anyway, we'll see. What do you think, Amy? Interesting. We'll keep an eye on all of that. Um, have we got time? Sorry, were we just saying you wanted to do another story there, Charlie? Yes. Uh, uh, Should we talk I, about... I just, I just Go want on. to wonder, um, uh, are you, Fraser, are you a football fan? No, I'm not. No, are you a football no. fan, Liz? Uh, I'm just kind of love Liverpool a bit. <laughs> but you see, the thing is, love. I think you have to love a club. Fans love a club. Yeah. They want an owner yeah. to love a club. And the American models mm. often... Man United. Man United. Well, I can't <laughs> possibly. No, I'm not. I'm not. The other clubs are available to, Ameri to American owners. <laughs> that's a spot there. Um, that, that is. Um, uh, but I would have to say that there is a model that applies in the United States but does not necessarily apply yeah. here. For instance, mm. they don't like relegation. Yeah. They don't like the idea that, you know, that... You, it's next a winning year, machine, it has to yes, be. Yes, it has to stay there. And that's the nonsense. I mean, I find most American sport a nonsense. I find, I find American football one of the most boring things <laughs> yeah. ever. Stop Baseball, down. what's that all about? And those costumes that they wear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. I've never Man watched a minute of it in my life. Into yeah. a baseball game, you don't actually watch any baseball. You eat. It's all just distractions. Yes. Yeah, I had a great time, time at... Um, the uh, uh, Dodgers in LA because it's all the organ plays. Every time something happens, there's, a, there's an old woman on an organ. <laughs> da, da, Sounds da. like Monty Python. And you all yeah. sing, so take me out to the ball game, and there's chucking hot dogs <laughs> and bags of peanuts. Oh, yeah, and there's a match going on. Yeah. The Clearly, this <laughs> all it's basically it. about spending money. It's about yeah. eating and it's about drinking and it's about getting fat. <laughs> uh, Sounds other with people. ADHD, basically. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's quite Sounds strange. awful. Guys, going to see you again in about yeah. 45 minutes. Thank, Thank you very much indeed, Liz and Fraser. Are there.